Oh, what is that noise there? Who's who's there? Oh, hello, wizards. It, you caught me. It is me, Devin. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to be like a good actor anymore. Was I ever trying to do that? Anyway, you caught me looking at Mark Rosewater's blog atog on, on Tumblr. Uh, first of all, a few things. In case you didn't know, blogs, still a thing. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? But before a new site comes out, Mark Rosewater likes to use his blog to talk about all the, some of the things, not all, but some of the things they are going to be in the new set, some cool creature types to look forward to, and some enigmatic, cryptic clues as to what some of these cards are going to be or do or whatever. And that is, in case you didn't know, fantastic content. What a content opportunity. And you like content as much as I do. And it's my job to put it out. So let's let's do some fantastic content today. And talk about all the things that Mark Rosewater said in his blog about Neon Genesis Evangelion Kamigawa. Neon Dynasty. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I will never get it right. Because um, I watch anime in my life. Um, but anyway, let's talk about all the things that he said about Kamigawa today. And what it all really means. That was silly. I shouldn't. I'm leaving it. Hey, remember to like the video if you like the content. Maybe subscribe. Hey, guys, we made it to 125K subscribers. Did you see that? We did it. All of us together, we did that. Thanks, guys. Uh, let's get to them. Let's get to a million. Can we do it together? We can. Just the two of us. Let's talk. I'm feeling good. Let's talk a little bit about what Mark Rosewater said. And I guess we'll start with probably the thing that people have been talking about the most today. If... The Reddit is to be believed, but the first thing that Mark Rosewater said about Kami Gala is that there's going to be two different pairings of creature types that get tribally connected. Now, most people are saying snakes, Naga, um, even though there's no Naga on Kamigawa. You can make that rhyme if you try hard enough, but there's there's never really been, there's been what, Orochi, I think they're called, um, are the snake people on Kamigawa? And I don't, I don't even know if they're... A lot of people think that they're going to make, you know, like, creature, snake, naga, warrior, or whatever. Even though they don't usually put two, like, race or species on the same... Sometimes they will. Um, but I don't think that's what they're doing. I don't think that's what he's referring to here. I think he's talking about tying together two creature types that needs some sort of tying together or maybe they were tangentially tied together last time we were on Kamigawa but not fully tied together and maybe these cards will tie them together. An example of what I'm talking about because it sounds like I'm just being dumb I, I agree is uh, say Ogre and Demon. I've seen some people hit on this and that makes sense because like Ogres and Demons work together but there was never a card that tied those two creature types together. There have been Ogre Demons but again that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a card that mechanically works with both creature types. Um, you know a card that for, for each Ogre you control the something something Demon. <laughs> or you know Demons and Ogres you control get plus one plus one. It's probably not as simple as that but that's kind of what I'm thinking. Right? Um, kind of like how a couple of sets ago we tied together spirits and enchantments. <laughs> you know, there are cards that care about spirits and enchantments. Maybe there'll be cards that care about both demons and ogres or something like that. Or maybe, uh, here's another one that I think is possible. Rogues and ninjas, because rogues are a semi-important creature type in standard already. They could be a more important creature type. There's already, like, some, some things care about rogues. And I think if you had some, like, rogue ninjas, some ninja rogues, I don't know, um... Because it's more, it's, it's more common to put two class types than two species on a creature. So I could see, like, Rogue Ninja. I could, you know, something like that. Human Rogue Ninja. Um, and that way you can have things that work for, you know, the Ninja subtype that's definitely going to be in the set. And stuff that works for the Rogue subtype that's already a thing in standard. So, like, they could tie those two things together because Rogues kind of are ninjas a little bit, sort of, already. As a matter of fact, in Final Fantasy 1, if you... <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. In Final Fantasy 1, if you choose the Thief class at the beginning of the game, then once you get to upgrade all of your classes halfway through the game, once you get the Rat Tail, right? You remember? You with me? Final Fantasy 1 people? Then the Thief becomes the Ninja. So it's like... <laughs> I guess rogues have been tied to Ninja for a while, at least in video game pop culture. A whole 30 plus years. Um, not that long in the scheme of things when you think about it. But anyway, I can see rogues being connected to ninjas pretty easily is all I'm saying. So it does say two different pairings of creature types. So, yeah, ogre demon 
Rogue Ninja is what I would guess here. Uh, next up, a black instant with destroy target creature or planeswalker that can be cast for two mana. So, can be cast for two mana is different than it costs two mana, right? So, it's going to have some kind of alternate cost or maybe if something happened this turn, right? If X thing occurred this turn, you can cast the spell for two mana. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Maybe like a spark harvest thing where like you sack a creature, you cast it for one mana. It's something like that, right? Um, but as far as just a two mana thing that says destroy target creature or planeswalker at instant speed, if it is that, it's probably just got a ridiculous downside, like unbelievable downside, right? But more likely, what I'm guessing is that it's like a five mana thing at instant speed that can be, when certain conditions are met, it can be cast for two mana. Now, of course, we already kind of have a card like this in standard. We already have Baleful Mastery or something like that. It is called Baleful Mastery. You nailed it, Dev. Uh, but that can be cost. That can be cast for two mana. That's destroy or exile, really, a creature or a planeswalker. Uh, but the downside on that's pretty huge. But still, Baleful Mastery is better than people give it credit for. But we sort of already have a card like this in standard, so it's got to be better than Baleful Mastery. Next, a popular legendary creature from Champions of Kamigawa block returns in a new form. Um, Jinkataxius. Probably, we've already seen art for Jinkataxius. <laughs> Spoiler alert. We've already seen there's art for Jin. That's him. That's right. That is him right there. Uh, but I would also, I would like it if it were Maloku. He's on my computer over here. I like Maloku. Uh, I think he's awesome. Also, Eight and a Half Tails. Anybody remember Eight and a Half Tails? I think he was awesome. Um, so any of those would be awesome, but it's pro probably going to be Jenga Taxis, which is hype. It's really good. <laughs> if, it is, if it is him, that's great. And by the way, it's a cheeky replier on the internet. I see you. Uh, somebody apparently already asked him if it's going to be Hidetsugu, because we've seen Hidetsugu has a card. Uh, and he said, no, it's not that one. It's something else. So, yeah. I would think the smart money's on Jenga Taxis, which is awesome. But, but it could also... Oh, my, my moon man over here, Maloku, that'd be cool. I'd say I would love that. An unnamed mechanic that cares about you having two things that magic has had since its beginning. Uh, artifacts and enchantments? No, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. It's definitely not planeswalkers, but almost everything else has been around since the beginning, right? You know, enchantments, artifacts, lands, instant sorcery, creature... Well, it's, it could be not those things. Like It could be maybe not card types. Possibly. It could be like life totals in libraries or something, something like that. But no, I think the smart money here is probably on artifacts and enchantments working together somehow. Because that's always cool when that does happen. And, you, know, you got the Brothers War set coming out later on this year. So there'll be like future synergy with that if you do that now. I don't know. It could. I think that's what they're going to do. Finish of a five-card cycle many years in the making. A little misdirection here. Um, <laughs> because a lot of people would think immediately, like, oh, what's a five-card, what's like a land cycle or like a color cycle where a thing doesn't have, like, you know, green doesn't have, <laughs> like, the, the, you know, a card that's in a cycle. Um, but really, I think that the, the money here, again, and I, this, is, this is what everyone on the internet's saying, so I'm not going to take credit for this. But um, Kadama of the West Tree, apparently we have everything but that, including uh, Kadama of the Center Tree or something. I was not even aware of that card's existence until earlier today. But yeah, apparently we've gotten a Kadama of all the trees except for Kanye West. So I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be, right? Probably. One of Tamio's children gets a legendary creature card. So the spec here is that, uh, in case you didn't know, Tamio... Has a adopted Nizumi son? I didn't know. This is a something else I had no idea until earlier today. But the Nizumi are like the rat ninjas on Kamigawa. And apparently Tamio adopted one of the little rat ninja boys uh, forever ago. I was, I'm completely unaware of this storyline until three hours ago. Uh, but it's probably that one. It's probably that one. A new creature token with an ability not before seen... On a card. It actually says not seen before on a card. you got to get your verbiage exactly right. Because it's important on the internet. Um, I have no idea what this is going to be. It's a creature token. Um, but it's an ability that hasn't been seen before on a card. Now, I think this could be cheeky. And maybe it's just like a mechanic from the set that's brand new. So, of course, it hasn't been seen before on a card. Because the mechanic's brand new. Maybe. Probably that. 
but also somewhat likely is a, a, a unique creature token of some kind, right? Um, so that that's interesting, but I have no, I just, this is one of those that I don't even really have like a stretch for at all, you know? Like, what's what could the... You could just make up any new ability that you could that has not previously been done, and that's going to be it's going to be that's it, right? Like this, there's so many hypotheticals for this one that it's kind of useless <laughs> to like speculate on what this could be. But you know, a creature token with a previously never before seen ability it's, seems cool. Two popular cycles from Champions of Kamigawa Block return, each with a new twist. So. Uh, you know, I try not to look at leaks and stuff. I haven't looked at the leaks. I know that there have been new ones since the last time I looked. But um, we already know for a fact that there's going to be legendary dragons in this in this set. And that they're all going to be like based on the old legendary dragons. But like, again, with a twist. I think with a twist applies here. So like, we already know there's legendary dragons that coincide with the older legendary dragon cycle. So we, that's that's one of them. And I'm pretty sure we already know there's going to be legendary lands in this set. So there you go. That's probably what it is. The other sort of outside speculation on this is uh, shrines. But I don't know if they're going to do that. I don't know, man. Like, what does Historic now have the cycle of shrines that was just printed? And then the original cycle of shrines already. They, they have those in Historic, right? Because they're part of an anthology. And then they release even more shrines. I don't know. It's like the shrines deck will probably never be truly competitive in historic. Although, ask a shrines player if their deck is competitive, and they'll be like, "Yes, it's very good." People seem to really like their shrines decks. Uh, <laughs> but all I'm saying is that I doubt that they'll do shrines. It'd be cool if they did. I would be happy if they did. Even though shrines are great. But, you know, we already have two cycles of shrines, like the full cycle of the original shrines, and then the newest cycle of shrines in historic. So. Will they make more shrines for the shrines deck? Will they do it? We just make like a commander shrines deck. <laughs> Is that the end goal here? Maybe. <laughs> anyway, I think it's probably going to be legendary dragons, legendary lands. That's I'm putting my money on that. A creature what makes a legendary frog creature token in it. All right, so this is just fun. Maybe it makes frog from Chrono Trigger. <laughs> That's what I'm every time. Every time I play this card. I'm going to start whistling. Like, da, na, 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 na. That's the frog song from Chrono Trigger, by the way. Um, just a cool thing. That's a cool legendary frog creature, everybody. How cool is that? Um, two, mo two new Yamazakis. There's also two new Yamazakis coming. Ah, okay. The Brothers Yamazaki are an uncommon legendary creature. It's a human samurai from the original block. It costs three mana for two, one, Bushido, one. Oh, yeah, Bushido. If there are exactly two permanents named Brothers Yamazaki in play, the legend rule doesn't apply to them. Each other creature named Brothers Yamazaki gets plus two, plus two, and have haste. Huh. Can you... Huh. They should do partners. Like, these two new Yamazakis in this set should partner with this Brothers so that you can play them as a partner with your commander. If your commander is Brothers Yamazaki. You see what I'm trying to say? They should have the new one partner with this one. Honestly, you should be able to just partner two Brothers Yamazaki and Commander anyway, even though it doesn't have partner. That would be fun. That would be a fun thing to do. Next, here are some rules text that will be showing up on some cards, baby. You would think that the uh, can be cast for two mana black instant that destroys creatures or planeswalkers. You'd think that would be in this section. Anyway, rules text. Uh, you may cast target enchantment from your graveyard this turn. Is going to be on a card. That's it's awesome. I've actually been waiting for exactly that. Sounds weird, but I've been waiting for exactly that. We need more enchantment stuff to do in Standard. Uh, another one, where X is the number of times this ability has resolved this turn. My favorite take on this that I've seen so far is a kind of syncopate uh, that continues to counter things throughout the turn as kind of a anti-storm card in modern say. I think that would be really cool, but I doubt that that's it. I doubt that's it. So moving on to the next one. Whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. It's going to be on a card. That's going to be on a card. Whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery, <laughs> copy that spell. And this, this card's probably going to cost like five or six mana easily, right? It may even be a Planeswalker Ultimate. 
Wouldn't this read like a Planeswalker Ultimate? Whenever you cast an artifact, instant or sorcery spell, copy the spell. But yeah, it's really interesting that it's instant sorceries and artifacts. It's weird. I bet that's a Planeswalker Ultimate. Just now it came to me. Uh, yeah, probably. Next up, the first activated ability of an artifact you activate each turn costs two less to activate. Again, probably um, going to fit in pretty well with the Brothers War stuff that they do later. Maybe the Dominaria stuff that's going to happen this year. So that's cool, but note how much artifact stuff there is in this set. There's already like two or three things that have to deal with artifacts. So yeah, maybe it won't be entirely artifact focused, but it'll have like a tertiary artifact theme. And I'm down. I'm down for that. I love when sets do that. But they also tend to be uh, very powerful sets a lot of the time when they do that. The next one is then repeat this process for an enchantment and a planeswalker. You think it's just destroy target or return target? from creature to or maybe it's tutor maybe you tutor for a thing and then you tutor for an enchantment and then you tutor for a planeswalker that'd be sick wouldn't it but that would have to cost too much mana to be relevant <laughs> very likely you can't get too excited about cards can you like oh that's a really good ability that costs eight mana <laughs> that's not playable it's too cool um <laughs> magic's a funny space to live in nowadays <laughs> the next one is you may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with a chosen card that doesn't seem super playable but we'll, <laughs> we'll see what else is written on that magic card right uh you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control and probably do something that's not worth having to have a million creatures in your deck and on the table at the same time and you're not already winning the game because you have all these creatures out i don't know um <laughs> the next one is the legendary rule doesn't apply to permanence you control i smell sakashima on this one i smell me some sakashima and i that's that card is not a sack of Shima. That's a good card. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a fun commander, even nowadays and stuff. So, like, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like this one's got the sack of Shima stank on it a little bit. And, by the way, I love pretty much any card that lets you ignore the legend rule. So, cheers to whatever this is. I'm probably going to want to play that. Um, the next line of rules text that appears on a card is, That ability triggers an additional time. So... That could be fun. That could be fun. I'm not going to make a cut there. I almost wanted to, I was going to, I was going to do a cut. No, it just, it could be fun. <laughs> um, if it has dealt, oh, this is a fun one. This is a fun one, guys. Get ready for this one. If it has dealt 10 or more damage to that player this turn, they lose the game. Isn't that cute? Um, it's kind of, it sounds like poison. Put, 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 poison. Um, so maybe again, this is like a Jenga taxi thing. Uh, is Bob possible, right? Uh, some sort of callback to poison I could definitely see here because this just makes sense. <laughs> but note that it doesn't say like if it don't combat damage or anything. It's just damage. So maybe there's another ability on the card that does damage. You know, maybe whenever you cast a thing, deal a damage. Right? Like some, something. Maybe whenever a thing enters the battlefield under your control, deal a damage. And then if it's still done damage, you win. Finally, uh, this is what everyone's freaking out about. Are you guys ready for the big the coup de gras here? Um, creature types. Creature types that are in the set. The first one is Fox Pilot. I'm not going to make any of the obvious jokes here. I'm, I'm not going to make the jokes that you could make because there's like a million. Uh, but all I can say is that the card, if if if... Fox Pilots, I am going to make jokes. Why do I say I'm not going to make jokes when I make jokes? Um, I will say, though, that if, if my experience with Fox Pilots or anything to be believed, this card will probably be top tier forever and might even shine in standard. That was for my, that was for my people. Um, up next is Turtle Ninja. Not Ninja Turtle, but that's, of course, because Species comes first and then, and then Class after that. So it's a Turtle Ninja. Turtle Ninja. Um, so new new secret lair is coming out. Next is a Moonfolk Samurai. I love Moonfolk, by the way. It's, it's one of my favorite like creature types from the original Kamigawa. And it's cool that we're getting samurai back. We'll actually we'll also see a legendary goblin samurai too, which is awesome. <laughs> so let's get prepared for that. Uh, but we'll also see a goblin artificer. We will. Between the Goblin Artificer and the Legendary Goblin Samurai, I wonder if we're going to see Kiki Jiki. How do you do a Kamigawa set you don't do Kiki Jiki? Probably because it's been a thousand years. 
Hasn't it, am I wrong, hasn't it been like a thousand years or something since the last Kamigawa? So why would any of these characters exist? Except for maybe Jin Kataxia. <laughs> right. <laughs> and other people's descendants, they get to exist, I guess. Anyway, um, <laughs> where was I? Ogre Warrior will be a creature type. Eh. eh. Um, although it could be a black warrior, and we don't have a whole lot of black warriors. Just throwing that out there, if you want to do party shenanigans, you don't actually have a whole lot of options for warriors in black. Not a lot, not a lot of good ones, so maybe that'll be somewhat relevant. We're also going to get a rat rogue, which is probably a Nizumi, which also, by the way, points to rogue ninjas, right? Because Nizumi are usually ninjas. Rats are Nizumis, right? I don't know. Just connect the dots is all I'm saying. But we will at least be getting a rat rogue, which probably means uh, it'll at least it may bolster rogues as a subtype. That's good, maybe. <laughs> um, but we'll also get an we we'll also get an egg. But the funny thing about this egg is that it's an enchantment creature. Egg. That's awesome. I think we should enchantment creatures shouldn't show up all the time or anything, but they should be more common than they are. Like they shouldn't just be a Theros thing. Enchantment creatures are really cool as like a concept as a subtype of creature or a type of creature right i love anytime you can jam more card types onto one card it's usually good for multiple like synergy reasons when building decks so yeah enchantment creatures are cool uh so are eggs though eggs are also cool they're incredible they're edible we'll also get a legendary kirin spirit which is probably you probably knew that it's likely that you knew that um, but we'll also get a legendary enchantment creature, Snake Druid. With that, that's all of my answers to his weird nonsense <laughs> this time around. But, but, I don't know. I don't know why I'm obsessed with ripping the glasses off this video. Um, but I am. You guys want to do the YouTube stuff? You want to do that? You want to like, sub if you haven't done that yet. Hit up this stuff down here. We play Magic on Twitch. Sometimes play other games. Think about playing some Hades on Twitch here soon. Um, even though I'll have to start from a fresh file. And I do not want to do that. But I'm thinking about doing that. You want to watch me play some Magic or other games. Do that. We have fun. Um, you can check out the Patreon. Um, everyone who's joined the Patreon recently. Holy crap. Thank you. Cheesy. Louisey. Cheese and crust lasagna pie. Like the, the Patreon's like kind of popped off lately. And I'm humbled by it. And I don't. Like I'm kind of amazed by it. So. Oh my god, uh, thanks for all the support on Patreon lately, I really, really appreciate it. Um, a freaking lot, I don't know how to tell you how much I appreciate this, because it's going to keep me from going into like massive medical debt or losing my house, or, you know, all that stuff, so I really I appreciate that. I need those things. So thanks, uh, all the new patrons, I'll try to do everything I can to uh, make it up to you, your support. So Anyway. Um, is that it? Is that all the stuff? Who's over here? What am I? What do I keep looking at? Jerry's not here for this video. His name is Tim. I feel bad for calling him Jerry. My character calls him Jerry, right? But I know because I created him. <laughs> I know his name is actually Tim. But um, <laughs> Jerry's not here today. He's off. He lives in my head. How is he off? But anyway, I'm just. I guess I'm not going to get dressed up and do the Jerry bit today. But anyway, I love you all. <laughs> it's very true. And I'll see you for spoiler season super duper soon. I have my checkup appointment. My first checkup appointment uh, for the doctor, the heart doctor. I've got that to look on Wednesday. So wish me luck. Uh, but I'll probably be back tomorrow. Depends on what they ban. If they ban anything in standard, I might be back tomorrow to, to chat. <laughs> but anyway, wish me luck. My doctor's appointment. And I will catch you cats later. I am Dev from The Place. Thanks for watching, wizards. Make sure no matter what you do, you spread love and you be kind.